Polonarua, 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 World Heritage Site. It's a large site, as you can see here. And uh, I'm renting a bicycle. I'm renting a bicycle uh, because it's a large site. And I just wanted to relax a bit, so I did a tour of the whole site on bicycle. Now I'm ready to start down here at the Royal right Palace, there, right, there. right there, by the lake, the Royal Palace at the bottom. But I cycled all of it before. So there, the dark red on the lake is Royal Palace. This half hour bicycle ride was therapeutic for me since back home I bicycle three times a week, uh, long bicycle rides. This really felt good. You're viewing Travels with Lobo vlog number 16 in the three-week discovery tour of Sri Lanka. In this week's vlog, I'm visiting one of Sri Lanka's most interesting archaeological sites, Polonarua. In this vlog, I'll be covering the following topics. You can scrub along on the timeline to get to any topic that might interest you. It is, after all, an old story about an archaeological site, but I did manage to uh, weave in Henry Ford and hitting a speed bump. I'm still in uh, Sri Lanka's Cultural Triangle, where I started in Anuradhapura, moved on to Sagriya, and now Palanarua. And during this time, I spent three nights at the Lion's Rock Hotel in Sagriya. Dogs are everywhere in Sri Lanka. As are, as are monkeys. Generally, they're harmless. Generally. I am at the Royal Palace site, and I guess the important thing to note here is uh, it was built by King Parakramabahu the Great in 1153 to 1186 AD. So it's, it's old, but not that old. After the experience I had two days ago where I walked barefooted for about uh, close to two hours and my feet were just aching like crazy because of the rough rough terrain and uh, the heat, I'm glad that here you don't have to take off your shoes and I'm okay with what I got. I got shorts on, but I also have a pair of long pants in my backpack if I need to. Here's one guy who's not paying attention. I would say all in all a royal palace of rather modest proportions uh, built as I said in the 1100s AD but I guess there's more down that way Modest proportions? Maybe not, since archaeologists claim it was once upon a time seven stories tall. Sheds a whole new light on it. So at the back of the uh, palace or over there, uh, more outbuildings. But still, on the scale of things, not terribly impressive. I am puzzled what I was expecting. The pyramids of Giza? The tomb of Qin Shi Huangdi with its 8,000 life-sized terracotta warriors? The Pyramid of the Sun at Teotihuacan in Mexico? No, this is Polonarua, established as the capital after Anuradhapura had been invaded in the late 10th century. Under King Parakramubahu, who ruled in the late 11th century, Polonarua became a magnificent walled city. No archaeological site would be complete without some columns a la Greece. Obviously monkeys were around a long time because these sculptures are of monkey-like images. Where's the nearest monkey? Can I see one? No, this is one time I can't see one. It's left, left me. No monkey in sight. Oh boy, that's rare. Stone columns that once upon a time supported a relatively low roof. I guess the people were pretty small, adorned with sculptings. Intricate stonework on each of the columns. And here's some other decoration. 
There's a sign there saying no sitting on the lions, but they look more like monkeys. And uh, here from the shade is a nice view. Nice side view as I head down that way towards the lake. Here is a water basin, very important to any existence of a palace. I thought there was a lake over there, but just a fast flowing canal. So the lake must be near here. At this point I'm visiting the sacred quadrangle, the Dalad Maluva. And right there is a circular temple. And that would be over here. It's uh, shoes off in these uh, temples and uh, mercifully it's a stone surface and pretty smooth and surprisingly it's not that hot as we go to a round temple that's associated with the tooth, the tooth of Buddha. That's a big deal. Yes, firstly, a vatataj is a type of Buddhist structure, round structure. And uh, yeah, Wikipedia uh, backs that up about the tooth. Uh, it was built by the king to hold a relic of the tooth of, of the Buddha as uh, well as his alms bowl. Now, I don't know yet, but uh, I think that relic of the tooth of Buddha ended up in candy where it's the biggest attraction going. You got to see it when I do it later. Yeah. I've got bandages on the bottom of my feet, and that helps a little bit. Can you imagine a till box when you consider the entry fee here is 55 rupees? Uh, that's about 35 Canadian dollars. I'd say that's enough. I misspoke there as 35 Canadian dollars are about 5,500 Sri Lankan rupees. <laughs> Buddha, the greatest man that ever lived, immortalized with innumerable and infinite number of statutes. Well, it's got to be finite, but there's a lot. Can you imagine the number of elephants that must have existed back then in the 1100s? must have been massive. They must have been fighting elephants day and night. Here's this magnificent circular temple from the outside. From the circular temple across to here, and I can feel the temperature rising on the stones. I notice the uh, dominant color here is, of course, white, as I wear black. And uh, here is me wearing black. Black, 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 all the way down to the... Uh, all the way down. Black, 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 black. Black is the color. Black is... Like Henry Ford said, you can have any color you want as long as it's black. So it's Henry Ford Day today. Must have been some very interesting activities that took place in this room. Can't imagine it though. What life must have been like, even for a royal family. Number 54, Siva Diwali, number two. And uh, this is the oldest Hindu shrine in Polonnaruva. So 985 to 1014 AD, and it's right in front of me. Right there, the oldest Hindu shrine here. In uh, Colombo, I was actually inside two Hindu temples, and that made for some terrific video. You got to see it. Those visits to the Hindu temples in uh, Colombo were with my Tamil Hindu tuk-tuk driver. That's four and five on the Sri Lanka playlist. Hindu shrine. Totally different from Buddha. Existed here. Long time ago. 
Finally, something to get excited about, a stupa of epic proportions. Well, if not epic, it's huge proportions. And this is the tallest at 54 meters, stupa or gadaba in Palinarua. That makes it the fourth largest in Sri Lanka. That's the good part. But then again, it's shoes off. Shoes off. So here, of course, is the entrance to the stupa. Uh, entrance to the stupa? No, there is no entrance to a stupa. It's solid. There might be in the middle. There are probably holy relics, but they're not accessible. So yeah, that's not the entrance to the stupa. Here's a real treasure, a rock that you can actually sit on and enjoy this very sacred scenery, sacred in the Buddhist world of Sri Lanka. Look at the lovely colors on this Sri Lankan cow. Moo! Lovely colors of the coconuts along here. Very tempted to have one. And the beautiful green of this pond. This was the only place you could get some refreshment and I'm so glad I did. This really felt good on a hot, hot day. In this pastoral scene, I hit a speed bump. I can't find my bicycle. I know exactly where I left it. It's not there. So my trip comes to an abrupt end. Yes, so someone did move the bike around and I eventually found it. But uh, here's a tip for you. When you rent a bike here or anywhere else, I suppose, take a photograph so you can identify it easily. So I found that bike with that basket. The place of the reclining Buddha just to the right is called Galviharaya. Galviharaya. Uh, <clears throat> my last stop is uh, teeming with monkeys. Now over Buddha's head. And uh, seems to be a temple carved into a rock. I debate, do I take my shoes off and explore? Probably will. It doesn't look like you can go in there very deep. And uh, more statues there and of course a reclining Buddha. Right there. Reclining Buddha. Gil Vihareya is a group of four beautiful Buddhas in perfect condition, cut into one long slab of granite, highlighted by the reclining Buddha, of course. Wow. I'm now at the largest monastery complex called Alahana Parivina. This is the largest monastery complex. And you can just see the round stupa at the peak. A white stupa. Not very well maintained, but a white stupa. 
archaeological sites all around or ruins and from this side the white stupa looks a lot more whiter. Next door looms a sphinx-like structure that might be the biggest of all. And over here I find almost the remains of uh, what seems like a huge, huge cathedral. It's not, of course. This has nothing to do with cathedrals and Christianity. This is all about Buddhism. And uh, right straight ahead, it looks like an elephant trunk, but no, it's, you can see the feet at the bottom. Love the contrasting colors that are exposed by the deterioration that's taken place here. Even the green of the plants. Look at those columns. Thank you for viewing and sharing this amazing day with me at Palonarua. Next Friday, I'll be going to, uh, no, not another Buddhist site, but uh, Sri Lanka's second biggest city, Candy. It'll be nice to see some cityscape. See you then.